Okay, it's 6.30. We have a quorum. We'll call the planning board meeting to order. And first up for general information, Mr. Dwyer. Uh, Lynn Latham. Good evening. Um, I'm here as chair of the library trustees in order to talk with you a little bit about the sign that we would like to have um, constructed and installed at the library to promote the pollinator sustainable garden that we are installing with the uh, um, assistance of the Hampton Hampshire Conservation District. Um, I sent you images of where the sign is proposed to be placed, an example of one that was constructed for another project. Um, what I am hoping you will be able to tell me is whether or not there are any steps that we need to take in order to be able to stall, install this or a similar sign or if there is anything else that we need to do, because the sign really is an integral part of the project. Mm -hmm. um, I do have images and pretty good approximations of the signs that are currently at the library. There is an exterior sign. May I share my screen? Yeah, hang on yes. a sec. Let me get that set up. I'm sorry, I stepped out. I missed the beginning. Is this a temporary or a permanent sign? A permanent sign, or at least as long as the garden doesn't die. Okay, you can. Ooh. It is not showing me my screen. I'm not oh, I, I do apologize. I, this came in uh, late on Friday, and I did not get a chance to uh, forward it around. I just forwarded it. Um, if you're having trouble, Lynn, I may be able to share my screen. No, I. what I have is a picture of the street sign, and I have a drawing of the measurements, and I have a picture of the building sign and an approximation for the size of that, if that is at all relevant. If it's not, then the sign sharing doesn't, or the um, screen sharing doesn't matter. Well, let's take a look. Just pu put up what you've got and one at a time. I can't because when I click on screen share, the options that it shows me are not my screen. Okay, well then let me see what I can do. Sometimes it, if you have multiple tabs open, it'll say other screens at the bottom when you try and share. I clicked on all of those and mm -hmm. nothing shows up, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I have them all open and ready. It's like when you take your car to the mechanic and it stops making that sound. Yep. Okay, let's see what I have here. I will just mention that the street sign, I don't know if you count two sides doubly or just the whole thing is essentially um, three feet by six. So 18 square feet. And the building size is 12 inch letters that are 15 feet, spread out over 15 feet. A two-sided a two-sided sign counts as one sign. Okay. So my okay. calculations suggest that we currently have a total of 33 square feet 
uh, signage. Yeah. Who, who has 33 square feet? Okay, let me bring the up the sign first of all. The library. The, li the existing signage at the library totals approximately 33 square feet. This is not exactly what we are going to install. It is a sample of what has been installed at another site. This one is two feet by three feet. Um, I am not entirely sure that we need one that is that large. This one is also 40 inches above ground level, the bottom of the sign. And our preference is for something that is closer to 24, 30 inches from the ground and mounted at an angle so it is easier to see over the top because the whole point is to be able to see the garden that's behind it. Um, but this is a sample of the color printed on aluminum and this sign is actually seven years old. Okay. So and these are not illuminated. If it's dark out, you don't read it, right? Um, if you can't see the plants, there's no point in having any <laughs> light. You know, if you if, what you can see by moonlight <laughs> is what you can see. Or if you okay. get out your phone and look. Okay. If so there I mean, are... This is the... Proposed location. Location. Hang on a sec. That know. would be the green line on the right. The heavy green line on lower right alongside the sidewalk that leads to the primary main door. So this will, So this will be in front of the library? Correct. There already is a planting area in that space. You can see the dotted line that sort of defines where that's located. The proposal, the proposed garden is larger than what exists. And you can see that it's marked as an extended bed and a new bed. And the sign would be in front of all of that, basically explaining what the pollinator garden is about, who funded it, who maintains it. And I think there will probably be QR codes where you can look for additional information. Where is the driveway? The it is to the right away, of the parking lot. The parking spaces are to the right of the sidewalk. All right. And the driveway is behind that. And the Goodwin parking, yeah. then more parking areas, and then the Goodwin. Where, where's mm -hmm. north on this drawing? North is to the left, isn't it? Correct. The library is oriented almost exactly east-west, where the front of it on Middle Street is west, and the side of it facing the senior center is east. Oh, oh so this, this sidewalk goes to the library and stuff, not the sidewalk along... Um, no. Middle, Middle Street. Street, correct. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay, you, I'm, okay. That, I'm, I'm trying to figure out... Okay, now I got it. All right. Yes. Okay. No, we are not doing anything that far with the, the public street. public sidewalk. Not that this isn't public, but it's not. You're 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 you're. Yeah. What does the board feel about the signage? I think it's fine. Yeah. I'm more concerned about whether somebody gets bit by a bee and has a reaction. <laughs> the uh, I guess the only comment would be about your sign <coughs> is that it has to look like you're in the historical overlay district. All right. And it needs to look like wood. It doesn't have to be made of wood. It just has to look like wood. In other words, a, a textured aluminum sign would work or a textured plastic sign or something like that. Okay. Okay. Try to be consistent with everything else that we push in the overlay district. The existing street sign is metal. You know, I suppose from a distance it could look like wood, but it's not. It doesn't have to be made of wood. It just right. has to look like wood. 
Okay. Of painting. Okay. <clears throat> I'm wondering so how difficult it would be to print on textured aluminum, or if that would affect the longevity of the printing. But we will investigate. So it's non-commercial. It's more educational than advertising. So oh, absolutely. I don't see any issue with it. I think it's beneficial. How big is the sign going to be? You said two by three? Uh, two by two and a half, is that what you said? It depends exactly how much information okay. we try to put on there. If you can tell me, if you want to tell me that it can be no larger than pick a number, I, I will be happy I, to work within the parameters. You, you, you're, you're someplace between probably six and eight or nine square feet, roughly? Yes. Okay. I mean, th that seemed like a very reasonable number. So rather than say you're going to be no bigger than this, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what you want to put on there. So I'm a, I'm hesitant to be too much of a dictator and say you're going to do. You can't be bigger than this or that. Okay. So once you get once you get what the sign will look like, you got you got some parameters, if you would. Come back to see us, and we'll give you. We'll approve it. It's good to know where to start. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we had Scott Faringo. Hello. You can take the sign down, though. Oh, yep. Hey, everybody. I'm Scott Farino from Sign Design. Thank you for your time tonight. We have two projects on the docket, I guess, uh, both on Russell Street. Uh, one at 333 Russell Street for Four Seasons Liquors and one at 285 Russell Street for Gardner Supply. Both are sign relocations. Actually, one's a sign relocation, one's a sign relocation and replacement <clears throat> uh, due to the Mass DOT widening, street widening. Okay, no. I can show you drawings uh, or however you want to proceed. I can share my screen if you prefer. Yeah. Did you send these over to us last week? Yes. And then on the Gardner Supply, we submitted stuff just today because we finally got the updated location, the new location. Okay. I, I don't think I recall seeing anything come in today all right you want me to pull that up and and show you yeah, well, why don't we take one at a time okay you want to do uh gardeners first or yep go ahead all right Let's see here. Share. That's four seasons. Hold on, let me figure that out. I guess we'll do four seasons first because that's one we have shared. If you don't mind. Let's see. Make that a small. Okay, great. So this is an existing sign that we're moving very slightly to get it into uh, out of the roadway. You can see here, the blue line is where it currently exists and it just creeps into the right away right there. So we're moving it back a few feet and over a few feet to this new location right here. Uh, we'll have new uh, footing, new support posts and a couple of bollards on the parking lot side to keep it out of harm's way. But it's an existing sign, it'll get a, a new shroud and 
and uh, new support structures and a new footing and the new bollards down here. I'll make a motion to approve the relocation of the Four Seasons sign. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4 0 with one absent. Thank you very much. And then this is the gardener supply sign. Uh, this sign is similar to the same build as a sign at another location they have, and it will replace the current sign right here. And this is another one that's moving very slightly. Right now, it just creeps into that right away. So we're gonna move it back and over to this magenta line, I guess. Just a quick question. The four season sign will still be internally illuminated, correct? Yes. Okay. Seems like we've had a number of uh, presentations on gardener supply, whether it's the building, the shed, the sign. It would be nice to have one comprehensive. I can't keep track of what we did on other ones. How 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 large is oh, the garden supply sign? Six foot by. Yeah, it's just under five feet, fifty five inches by six. Uh, that'll get you to twenty seven point five square feet. Is the new sign? I don't have measurements of the old sign, but I suspect the old one's larger than that. It looks to me to be maybe eight feet wide by quite a bit taller. So how, what are the dimensions of the new sign? Uh, the new sign is 55 by 72, which gets you to uh, 27.5 square feet. You're, wait a minute, your numbers don't make sense. 0. 0.7.4, no. 7.4, 70. Yeah, it, I'm sorry, it's 55 inches by 72 inches, uh, which would be 27.5 square feet. And I'm going inches to feet, sorry. Say that again, points, no, no, no. Uh, 55 inches tall. Yes. Uh, by 72 inches wide. Right. That gets us to 3,960 square inches. I divide by 144 to get the square footage to 27.5. Fifty-five times seventy-two equals that's right. Seven point five. Okay. <sighs> okay. All right. External illumination, obviously. Yes. Okay. Um, any comments from anybody? Um, this is obviously making the sign smaller, so that's better. What did we agree to on the building? None. There's no building sign. At least that's what they said when they were in last time. Hmm. They took down the old Hadley Garden Center, and they said they weren't planning on putting anything up. Okay. I'm in favor. This looks attractive and it's smaller than the existing and externally lit. That seems like a plus. And in this case, we're only talking about the street sign. They they do have to come back to us if they change their mind about the building signage. Yes, absolutely. I, I'm only uh, engaged to talk about the street sign. I don't know anything uh, that's in process of, of the building signage. 
I'll make a motion to approve the relocation and, and redesign. That. Motion and second. Any other discussions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes 4-0 with one absent. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Okay. Um, next up we have uh, James Martin, but I'm going to suggest that might take slightly more time and I think uh, with um, the others are all, uh, several of the others are also sign related. So um, maybe we can jump over to, um, we'll get back to you, Attorney Martin. We'll get back, uh, step, touch base with Kestrel next. There. Thanks so much. Uh, my name is Stu Watson. I'm the stewardship manager at the Kestrel Land Trust. Uh, like Bill said, another sign inquiry here. And um, I'm coming to you about the property on North Maple Street. Uh, we would like to uh, request a permit to replace a sign that was there. Um, <clears throat> And I'm actually coming to you a bit with my tail between my legs because we actually made the sign already. And then we realized, oh geez, we need a we need a permit for this. So what I'm wondering is if we can make the sign I proposed to you work. If the answer is no, that's okay. But then I'd like to know sort of what uh what we can do, what what the parameters are for a sign that would work there. So the proposed sign is uh 45 inches tall and 72 inches wide. And I have a picture of it and a map of the location if you'd like to see either of those things. Yeah, go ahead. I passed, I forwarded this around when it came in, but go ahead and share if you can, if you have sure. it handy. Yep. So uh, let's see. Less than 24 square feet, I think. Here's the sign. Excuse me, buddy. I'm in a meeting. You need to leave right now. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> this is the proposed sign. Like I said, it is uh, 72 by 45 and it's um, made out of aluminum. And it's actually going to be a uh, sandwich so that there's two sides to it. So there's a panel on one side and a panel on the other. They'll be attached to the structure. It's an existing structure. because we had a sign there for a number of years but it was uh, a vinyl banner. Um, but the frame is still there. So we would be reusing the existing frame um, and it's two four by four posts and uh, four two by fours spanning them. And this would be screwed onto the two by fours. How big is the existing sign? Uh, it was slightly smaller than this. I don't know exactly what it is. I can show you a picture of it. Uh, are you seeing? Future haven for pollinators, a sign in the in the grass. Oh. So no, no more than meadow is what we're seeing. Okay, one sec. Wonderful. Let me try something else here. Okay, that's what's there. So the frame still is there. We just ripped down this vinyl banner, so it's an empty frame right now. Correct. A lot of lab, it's, it's lab M delta. I think lab M software, right but it's delta. It's, it's uh. So this is the frame and um, basically the sign would fill this. So it, it would be a little bit bigger than the banner. This, this empty space here would be filled in by the new sign and it would be the span of the uh, two by fours to the two four by four posts. Why so big? Honestly, Jim, um, because the frame was already there. We measured the frame and said, let's just put up this exact same size sign. And that's what we did. Um, in hindsight, that was not the best move that we made. So um, we understand if you guys say this is way too big, not happening. Um, but that's that's the only reason why. Yeah, I mean, the, the sign that's there, if I remember, is not four foot by six foot. It's probably closer to. I'm gonna oh, you mean the what's currently on the property? Yeah. 
Yeah, we have like a, a, a probably it's 18 by 24. It's a very small sign that just it says Kestrel Land Trust on it. Um, and that would be coming out. So if the new sign went in, the the smaller sign would, would be removed. So, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that that's, to be honest, I mean, it, it's just, oh, I'm, I'm going to say this, nothing against Kestrel Trust, because I think you people do a wonderful job. Don't take this the wrong way. No problem. Go for it. But if, if we start allowing one company to put in, you know, an oversized sign like this and start advertising, then others are going to say, well, you let such and such do it. Why can't I do it? Sure. If you were to put up the same size sign that's there, I'd have no problem with it. And that's just my opinion. Yep. I know what others feel. No, I, I would concur. We have a what? What is it? Twenty four, two square feet or three square feet in the agricultural residential I, I district. I think we went to uh, four square feet because square. We, we increased that a couple of meetings ago because two was too still two square feet was tiny. Yep. So yeah. we we do allow a sign of four square feet. Yep. And that would be the maximum size that we could work with there. Unless whatever you have already installed is larger than that. Well, the sign that you're looking at, the vinyl banner that's that, that was there, it is no longer there, it was there, is significantly larger than that. Okay. This is probably, so let's see, if the proposal is um, 72 by 45, this is probably 40 by, or 30, six by 62 or something i mean it's and i do you recall you, you didn't bring this particular version into to us did you that i couldn't answer that question i've worked for kestrel for four years and this sign was there before i started so this was at least five years ago and I'm, i i couldn't tell you if that went to you guys or not if i had to guess i'd say it probably didn't I, I don't recall, and I think the building inspector at the time uh, may have just approved it as a temporary sign without asking yeah. for a planning board review. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I concur that it's too large. Uh, I did share with you uh, previously, some comments that uh, Dr. Zagrodnik left with us um, because we were, had initially thought you might be at our last meeting. And uh, the, um, the other comments were that uh, it's located in, in a swale, which will impede mowing and plastic, not wood or yeah. wood appearing. Yep. Yeah, I think the swale issue would, would be a non-issue again, because this has been there for five years and I've it's it's way on the far side of the drainage ditch. So the, the town mower wouldn't come anywhere near it. Um and yeah, it is it is made out it, it is printed on aluminum, so it does not have any wood like um appearance. <clears throat> the uh We would like to have it a wood-like apparent, but that really only applies to the to the uh, historical overlay district. So you kind of fall out of that, but um, the size is still you. You definitely have should comply with the sign size of the sign. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. I don't think we we're ever looking to be what is it arbitrary and capricious. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So if if we create a sign that complies with the four square feet uh, limit, do I need to come back to you, or or we're good to go? Probably just to cover your base. The building inspector they want you to come back just to get our approval. It'll be a minor thing. Okay. All righty. Thank you very much for your time. Okay.
Okay. And we keep on losing Esalon. But he was on there. Where did he go? He's gone. Or is that iPhone 13 mini? I That's me. So. Okay. Um, so you did send a revised design in just today. And I think I did get it sent around to everybody, but uh, uh, I don't know if everyone has, has seen it. But do you want to, uh, can you screen share or do you want me to try to do it? Um, I'm having some troubles with my computer, so I don't think I'm going to be able to screen share. Are you able to do that? Yes. The last time I was on Zoom, I think it was for a planning board meeting. So let's see. You have uh, four attachments here. Um, three current and one proposed. So... Let me What's the address at Esalon? 99 Russell Street. Okay. Okay. So oh, I, I have the first one up. And that's what you want to do. Yes. Right. Is the Esalon Cafe on the east side as well? I see it on the west side. It's on the east side, west side, and then the front there. The north, and, yeah. yeah. it's not changing at all. I mean, the, the font color and the font color and font style are changing, but that's it. We're going with the same Sunbrella fabric. Um, the same installer that originally put it in. Everything's exactly the same, same size, same everything. So let me now bring up what you have presently, and that would be the front. Uh, let's see. I do not seem to be able to share your current drawings. It's a uh, file format that my computer does not recognize. Okay. Uh, it was in a... Well, close yours, Bill. Let me see if I can bring it up, the old one. Okay. Okay. Let's see. I'm looking at a photograph from the email. It looks like oh, the old, one. Okay. The old L was an upper uh, was a lowercase L. No. Oh. I can't open the old one. Let's see if we can find the old one. I'm trying to log in through my computer. I don't think I'm going to be able to speak, but I might be able to um, screen share what I have. I'm seeming to be able to open them, Bill, if you want me to share. but Yeah, go ahead. Yep. Let me just get them all open. Maybe then I can. Apologies for my technical uh, deficiencies. So let me get back to here. Share screen. Well, I can view them on my screen. Let's see if they will come up when I share. They're not they're not previewing nicely. Allow Zoom to all right. 
Yeah, it may not Zoom may not like them. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah, because I, I have them open on my on my Mac. It looks like it's a dot H E I C, which is um what the what the iPhone converts images to. I can't open them either. See if we can make this work. I just sent out to everybody a screenshot of one of them. Yeah, there you go. There it is. I think that's that's the, that's the existing um, awning. Yeah, yeah that's the existing awning. It's got the lowercase L. Okay. So you're pretty much replacing in kind with what you're doing with, with the new one with a new one virtually replaces the other one almost exactly the same. Um uh exactly the same, yes. Yep, just like I mentioned, the different color on the the font in a slightly different style to match our current. Yeah. I think it looks pretty good. It's an improvement. Yeah, yeah. and the graphics. Thanks. Scale is the signs aren't getting any larger. I don't. I don't see any issue. I'll make a motion to approve the changes. Second. Motion to second. Any other discussions? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four zero with one absent. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you. you Mark, could you stop sharing? Uh, oh, am I still sharing? My bad. All right. Were you able to stop my sharing? You're all set. No, you're you're all set. Okay. Um, so that takes care of Esalon. And uh, so uh, the one I don't recognize here is C. Brunelli. C. B. Brunelli? C. B. Brunelli. I am with uh, Jim. Oh, okay, then you guys are up. Chris and Christian Brianley at Chestnut Realty Management. Uh, we, I last was on this call on January 13th. We own 440 Russell Street, the Stop and Shop Acre Center. And, uh, you know, Jim will be better at explaining this than I, but we wanted to bring up uh, a little bit more detailed conceptual drawings of what we're thinking for the potential self-storage development behind the center. And I can share my screen. Go ahead. And, and, good, e and good evening. I'm uh, attorney James Martin with Pullman and Comley, and I represent the develop uh, the owner of the property. Okay. Um, we appreciate you giving us time on your agenda tonight to uh, allow us to give you a 30,000 foot overview of what uh, the, the owners would like to do and getting your feedback as to whether or not we are on target. I've looked at the zoning bylaws and had discussions uh, regarding this. Uh, we have engaged Bowler as the engineer. Uh, we believe that, um, that we, and understand that we will have to go through the process, which will include conservation commission uh, submissions and submissions before the board for special permits or any other uh, items that are required by the zoning bylaws. But the principal issues are in terms of um, frontage. Uh, I think it's fairly clear. We have frontage both on Russell Street 
and on Campus Plaza Drive, which is the uh, property, the uh, access road uh, that terminates behind the facility uh, and would like to uh, access uh, the proposed solar array through the uh, parking area and into the back. So this first drawing shows the, the, uh, the potential layout uh, and placement uh, of the uh, storage facilities, keeping in mind uh, any wetlands that would have to be uh, respected and uh, any other uh, required setbacks. Uh, so uh, we would, would you, we could come in either through uh, Campus Plaza Road into the center or right on Russell Street where we have about 350 feet of frontage uh, come up on what would be the east side and uh, enter into the uh, into the cell storage facility. Uh, key to this proposal is that we would propose to bifurcate the parcels so that the parcel behind the plaza would be a separate parcel. Uh, and we know we'd need to get approval for that as well. Um, so uh, that's the initial uh, context in which we're here tonight to get uh, the board's feedback and uh, guidance on uh, how uh, our, our proposal and how to proceed. Um, Christian, okay. do you have anything else? Christian, do you have anything else you want to say? Um, no, I think this is relatively self-explanatory. You're looking at this is the back of the shopping center and it's a wooded area and there's a cell tower back there. You'll see that circle there and that's what that cell tower is. And we're outside of the drop zone of that cell, of that cell tower and those various lines express everything from a 35 foot no disturb zone to a hundred foot wetland buffer to a hundred to, to a 200 foot riparian zone so those are the layers of colors there um but right as jim expressed the key to this is trying to subdivide uh this back parcel you said solar is it going to be solar and storage you did say solar jim i think you meant to say oh i'm sorry self-storage oh, yeah. okay. self-storage my okay. apologies I, I, was gonna, I wonder if you're going to put solar on top of the self storage. Yeah, that's what I was uh, wondering. That's yeah, not no, I, I apologize. Self okay. storage. P permitted use in a permitted zone, provided you got wetlands and everything else. Now, you said it's going to be a separate parcel. I don't see how you're going to make this a separate parcel. In what way, uh, sir? Well, you said you're going to make it a separate parcel. I don't know what you right. mean by that, but I don't see zoning wise how you can make it a separate parcel. Well, it would have it would have all the it would meet all the dimensional requirements, and it would have access and use the frontage from uh, from Russell Street over the uh, over the uh, shop stop and shop plaza. I believe your bylaws allow that by permit. You no. mentioned, I, mean, I don't. Maybe we're talking different things here. Okay, but are you talking a bona fide separate building lot? Jim, maybe you could show on your or wh whoever's sharing could show the outline of top Campus Plaza Road. There we go. So this is probably better. The bottom of your screen, you'll see Campus Plaza Road. And this is an accepted road and it ends up being it, it keeps going. And this is the wetland area. And this is the self-storage opportunity here. And okay. yeah, go ahead, Jim. So where we're speaking, sorry. Go, go slow. Where is Campus Plaza Road? Sure. At the right, very right bottom. Where he's maybe. drawing his arrow. You see my, my arrow over here? It's yes. a little faded. Yeah. And that goes further north. So this is Russell Street here. You yes. enter the shopping center this way, you keep going straight, and then it pulls, and then it uh this is the parking lot. And uh Campus Plaza Road effectively. The, the improvements of Campus Plaza Road effectively stop here. And then the wetlands area starts, but Campus Plaza Road itself keeps going. Um, okay, well, if you have wetlands, you don't have a road. Well, we have a way, and I believe um, Mr. Dwyer and I have spoken about that. So what we would need to some verification that Campus Plaza Road was laid out 
that way. If that is in fact the layout, which is what it shows on the tax map, then um, uh, I think they may, they may have frontage off of Campus Plaza Road, but they can't access it. So they'll need a special permit for access across other than frontage. But right. that that paper street would support um, a separate lot, even though it wouldn't provide true access. It was laid out. Whenever it was laid out, they didn't worry about wetlands, apparently. I believe uh, we discovered that it, oh, the way it was laid out and uh, accepted by at a town meeting in October of 96. Okay. So how, how would a fire truck access this storage facility? Through the plaza on the other side. Okay. How much room is there there? Christian, you want to put, there you go. Yeah, sure. So this is where the existing H&R block is right now. Uh, and uh, tractor trailer trucks, WB67s access uh, this area back there. Obviously, this is where on the bottom of the screen, it's hard to jump around, but the bottom of the screen is where TJ Maxx is, middle of the screen is where Stop and Shop is, and the trucks loop around here and exit there. So okay, so there's sufficient for WB67 trucks. Okay, so that, that, but, the, but it's, so it's 50 foot wide on the easterly side of the, of the building. Right, right. Okay. And how wide is the new proposed road going back into the wooded area? We're, we're not proposing a road going back to the wooded no, area. On the east side, there's a driveway going back to the storage. If oh, oh, oh. Uh, if my right. truck had to get back there. Right. Uh, that's a good question. I, I thought they said it was going to be 50 feet as well. Um, yeah, we'll have the market on the plan. Look, that's right. It doesn't look that wide. Compared to the, uh, I mean, well, it, it's it maybe. says there that it's a, a it shows a forty foot setback in there, so it's at least fifty feet. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, th those are those are details that'll be ironed out with the building with the fire chief once yeah. you get yes. once you submit something. Correct. Where is the entrance to the self storage facility? Right here is your office. Um, this is when you pull in these parking spaces right next to the, the office. And then um, I think this one probably better expresses it. No. Uh, where you drive the round and this, these are the self-storage facilities and these are paved areas um, around the self-storage facility. So it's very similar to the self-storage facility right behind our shopping center. I believe it's called Pioneer Stadium. Except it'll be paved. And the property boundary goes further back or significantly yes. back. Yeah. Okay. So you get your your green um on you know Yeah, it's about I, I believe it's about 19 acres, the whole thing. Uh 10 acres of it is developable and where this uh plan uh including the uh, office and the self-storage facilities about five acres in total so we have a significant piece of um non-developed area back there i mean from your thirty thousand square foot view it looks like you meet zoning or you could see you could meet zoning put it that way um details will show out when you start to plot it for lack of a better term and how does parking requirement work with the storage i guess those aisles they're actually parking in part of those aisles or yes generally people pull up to their unit and park in front of their unit so the, the public parking to check in the offices christian already identified it's usually just three spaces or so uh and then people go to their unit and then they exit It's generally, you know, it's generally not long term parking. It's drop on, drop off, pick something up, leave something. I mean, for the day they move in, it might be the longest time or the day they move out. But other than that, there's generally very little traffic um, uh, at a self storage facility. Will you have any provision for uh, 
long-term outside storage, such as uh, you know boats or uh, out of season things like that. We have no plan for that right now. The only thing we plan for is the uh, cell storage garage style structures. And Bill, out of curiosity, if, if the answer was yes, what would your reaction be? That yeah. would affect your parking requirement. Yeah. Because you, that space, once you make a permanent use of, of a space, it would uh, not be considered parking available for the facility. Got it. Now we're probably getting into too much detail, but on the west side, you have two long single depth buildings. It looks like the pink flood line, flood zone uh, comes inside of them. Or maybe I'm misinterpreting what that pink. Yeah, I, I'm. that's probably a little bit too much detail. Okay, okay. Mark, I mean, you, you raise a good point. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Maybe it's too early to credit to, to critique something like that yet. Right. Yes, um, we, we've discussed that with the engineer. The developers engaged the wetland scientist. They're going to uh, de uh, walk the site. They're going to demarcate the wetlands, and so these these things are, you know, subject obviously to the final work product from the okay. wetland scientist, and then going to the conservation commission, um, and. Um, and then coming to the board. But we wanted to get, as I say, uh, general feedback on this and uh, make sure that, you know, our approach on uh, subdividing this into two lots and, and, the, and the flow of, of the uh, traffic and the use of the Campus Way Drive for frontage uh, wasn't something that gave you a visceral negative reaction. Like I said, it, it, from a thirty thousand square foot view, it looks you have it looks like you have space to do what you want to do. And when drawings come out, we'll have better comments. Anybody else, Mr. Don? Do you have any other? No, I'm good. Okay. And 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 Bill. No, it seems seems like it should work. A loud use in the uh, district. You may have to trim it a little bit, and that'll affect your um, economics. But that's your yeah. call. Yeah, that'll be the pro forma. Will be yeah, may have to be tweaked, but we'll see. Super helpful. Well, thank you guys, me members of the board. Thank you very much for your time and uh, meeting with us tonight and giving us your feedback. And we will look forward to moving on with this project and uh, taking the next steps and uh, ultimately being back before you. Thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. There we go. Unmute me. There we go. I believe that up brings Mr. Fennell. Good evening, board. Good evening. Um, I have a draft for planning board rules and regulations to share and discuss. Uh, I believe also on the agenda, we may have a quick update from the Hadley 40R DLTA project. We had our first steering committee meeting yesterday. Uh, and then um, I can also bring up uh, an additional topic, the uh, draft permitting guide if time allows, but I recognize it's not on the agenda. Uh, but if we're ready to jump into rules and regs, I'm Happy to share my screen. Go ahead. All right. <clears throat> All right. I think we're here. All right. Uh, so, um, uh, let's see. Uh, I've got some comments here to help just orient and work through this. We've looked through many of the sections already, uh, but we've I've added some text in the back end of the document. Um, so um, if we jump to um, section two, organization, uh, just wanted to take note of where um, 
these sections are coming from. Uh, uh, upon your request, reviewing the uh, zoning bylaw and the town bylaw, uh, finding anywhere that the planning board is granted the authority to draft special rules and regulations that has informed this list here. Uh, in the comment, uh, we say, you know, where those originate. Um, so um, we've already looked at commercial site plan approval, uh, but we have yet to review in detail inclusionary zoning, accessory apartments, senior housing, home occupations, erosion and sediment control. And then um, I have some questions about limited business design review guidelines. Uh, but uh, that list at this point seems uh, comprehensive, um, at least based on the governing laws of the town. So I'm just going to move on to our next highlight. Uh, there was a quick addition <clears throat> at 2.4 uh, upon request from a previous iteration, just added the, the clause when deemed necessary, the clerk may hire outside consultants to assist the board. Um, that seemed pretty straightforward, but if there's any issue, let me know. Otherwise, I'll approve and just keep moving. Um, just <clears throat> one thing, uh, yep. 2.5. Oh, yeah. Uh, we have a select board. We no longer oh. have a board of selectmen. Oh, excuse me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dwyer. Um, uh, so uh, moving right along in the planning board fees, um, upon your request at a previous uh, meeting, uh, it was asked to include uh, the prescribed or the typical process as outlined in Mass General Law Chapter 44, Section 53G, uh, which I added here, subsection 0.2. Um, I believe it was included in a very early draft, but that's just um, kind of how the general law prescribes uh, this. Um, the text reads that uh, the current process that the board employs is first, subsection one, and then subsection two is the typical process. Any questions there or issue? No. Just, just going back to the, the clerk having oh. authority to hire um, yes. engineers, planners, et cetera. Yes. Of course, this is a this is a fluid document, and Mr. Dwyer seldom hires engineers or planners. What he really does is he talks to the town council, mm -hmm. um, because he's most likely to speak their language <laughs> than any other ones of us. Right. Um, so I guess that language is okay for the time mm -hmm. being, because we're not giving him any specific authority. It's just that when necessary. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. Okay, uh, move on. That's quite all right. Uh, it's it's a rare skill to speak legalese. Uh, it's something I'm I'm working on reviewing this document over and over. Uh, but uh, so project uh, peer review process seems uh, accurate for everybody. And then I think I jump down. So in section nine for the special permit review. Um, I just added this quick little clause just as a question. Um, it, um, if the planning board would find it helpful, uh, we could include here a comprehensive list of special permits. Uh, it gets pretty long. And um, of course, any any changes to the zoning bylaw or you know through planning board action or annual town meeting would then require a revision of this document, which would require a public hearing. So uh, just something to consider if, if that's of value to the planning board. I, I don't think you want to list all the special permits. That would get pretty cumbersome. <laughs> it would. It might add a page or so, <laughs> too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I'm happy to uh, remove that. Oh, sorry. Wrong button. We'll just do this. All right. 
So moving right along. All right, so now we're getting into new content uh, that we have not reviewed in past meetings. So for section 11, this comes from section 25 of the zoning bylaw, inclusionary zoning. Um, I've included here most of that bylaw as I haven't observed uh, your practice um, and how um, the planning board works through um, applications for inclusionary zoning. So I included everything here just to um, just for context and happy to work through and decide what is of value uh, and also decide you know what is uh, in addition to the bylaw um, that would be of help for you all. Um, so of course, governing law, uh, section 25, uh, planning board authority acting as the review authority for uh, inclusionary zoning. Uh, from 11.3 down, it's pretty much um, uh, exact to section 25 of the zoning bylaw. Um, and I think except for there might be an administrative clause or something that I just took out because it was already included in one of these first two. So uh, in um, 11.7, I did add some draft language uh, as it relates to determining fees in lieu or payments in lieu of affordable housing. Um, this is draft language from 2021. Uh, I believe this was brought to you from Ken Comia in a past effort to, to craft rules and regs. So happy to spend a little bit more, more time on that. But um, uh, yeah, if we have general thoughts on the inclusionary zoning section. Yeah. Yeah. I personally don't think you need to re rehash every word of the zoning bylaw here. Absolutely. Yep. <clears throat> payment, payment, pay, fees in lieu of is it going to is an interesting one because you've got four members here and you're going to get four different opinions. Yeah. And if you had five, all five members, you get five different opinions. It's a, it's a complicated thing. Yes. Uh, one of the things that I find interesting about it is we thought originally calculating our fees in lieu was pretty excessive. The way it was originally set up. Um, however, the town of Amherst recently agreed to and is collecting fees in lieu of that is significant for each other. Breath, breathtaking. Breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I've I've referenced uh, or I've. Uh, looked at uh, the community uh, Beverly Mass and and some of their payments are breathtaking to say the least. Uh, yeah, I mean uh, we, we, seven we figures. Were, so yeah, we were choking over ten or fifteen thousand dollars a unit, and right. they're getting yeah approximately ten to fifteen times that per unit. Right. Um. So this is. This is truly going to be a uh, evergreen topic for us to be discussing because it's interesting. Leave it at that. So, so I don't want, I don't want to dwell on that particular topic because we could spend all meeting on it and get nowhere. Okay. And Ken may have told you, or maybe he just threw you in here, right. but um, we spent hours on this, right? And never just couldn't reach consensus. Mm -hmm. um, as it happens, we have only had one senior housing project and one small residential development that have triggered this since right. we adopted the um, the bylaw some years ago. And um, in both cases, we sort of worked out an ad hoc solution. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will certainly agree with Jim for in. Two regards. One is I don't think we have to reiterate the um, language of the bylaw. And uh, secondly, we're not going to get this one, you know, just flag the whole thing for right. another day. Okay, that's fair. We'll come back to it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When, uh, when the point I was making mm -hmm. when 
there was a discussion about, do we have to even talk about this, is that we have all of this collective knowledge on the board presently. Mm-hmm. Um, everyone is familiar with affordable housing issues. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, we sort of owe it to our successors to write up write this up as best we can, but um, it's not going to happen quickly. And, and, and the flip side of that, if you would, is the state has several communities pushing to collect, no, to have a fee schedule, something like a CPA fee for affordable housing on right. property transfers. Mm-hmm. And if that goes through, a lot of these fees on inclusionary zoning um, will be greatly, I don't want to say reduced, but way made, made way more uh, easily to enforce. Right. Yeah. Um, would it be helpful for the board if uh, I did some quick research, found a few models that communities have employed? There's sometimes some complicated mathematics involved in these formulas but would that be of use or do you, you all just you, want to talk it out you, you could do that but i would start asking with ken because he gave okay. us a whole You're bunch right. of formulas in different communities so i don't okay. want to waste your time that's fair yeah, that's, i would, I would okay. check with him and see if there are any new ones out there we'd yeah be that's right check if there's any new ones. that would be it because yeah. uh the stuff we have is only a couple of years old so it's not really antique by any stretch mm-hmm. and <laughs> He, he'll take it. He'll probably chuckle with you when you ask him about this one because he'll say, "Yeah, we, 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 we turn this around a lot." Yeah. And, anyways, uh, so before before we move on, just um, and and I I appreciate the desire to um, uh, really limit the text of this document to what is beyond the bylaw. Uh, no need to reiterate and restate everything other than a section regarding payments or fees in lieu. Are there other um, considerations that may need to be outlined? Are there any particular uh, variances of concern uh, or uh, you know changes to procedure that you would want to add to this section? Or do we want to just kind of leave the the big elephant 11.7 it's kind of that's that's what's going to be there there's no easy answer to that because we've only dealt with this in very minor terms okay almost everything else we've dealt with we have reasonable experience mm-hmm. and we're gr- we're green on this one okay to be honest. okay so oh, um i don't think we have a good answer for you so that's quite yeah. all right. And our own finance expert took a shot at it, but his equation was more than a beautiful mind could handle. Yes, that's it's understood. It's 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 it can get very complicated. Um, all right, so I will I will Wait, do some digging. You're muted if you're talking to us. Oh, sorry, sorry. Thanks for your compliment, Mark. It's not deserved, but uh, the problem with the bylaw is that it kicks in at six units. So if you go in and build a five-unit subdivision, there's no contribution. Right. Uh, so there's so there's a way to skirt the uh, issue here. Right. Right. Yeah. You, know, you can you can buy you can build a, a five-unit subdivision with, that are worth one and a half million dollars each, and you don't put anything in and if you build a six unit subdivision worth four hundred thousand dollars each you do have to put something in right so it, 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 that's probably our area to look at how to make the bylaw more inclusionary okay dollar dollar wise yeah um i'll also add uh kyle this is please. itself an old bylaw i forget exactly when we adopted it but it's probably been close to 15 years oh, okay that we've had it on the books and um so this is not part of the planning board rules and regulations but uh 
that is also something that if there is a um, apart from formulas for if, if there are new state of the art bylaws for inclusionary zoning we would probably be interested in knowing about that that's not a specific request that can right. probably wait for next year's uh um work program but uh it'll be did the inclusionary zoning bylaw impetus come from the state was that you said we need one do you know i don't recall uh, it was while Robin Crosby was the town administrator, and uh -huh. I think uh, she brought it to our attention as uh, this would be a good idea, uh -huh. and um, especially as we were in a bit of a building boom at the time, so uh -huh. we were getting closer and closer to um, uh, losing the 10%. The um so the thought was to try to stay ahead of the game a little bit oh do some planning for instead of reacting for a change yeah God, we were chastised quite handily hmm. about the fact that we had nothing in writing okay okay and that's a problem yeah yeah understandable um okay uh I will keep this in mind. Uh, again, try to do some quick research, make sure that I'm not uh, spinning my wheels on work already done, but um, I'll see if we have some good uh, alternatives uh, for the next iteration. If not, we'll we'll talk about how to move forward with this. Um, but uh, if it's all right, we'll move on to the next section. Please. Uh, yeah. Uh, I did uh, include a quick note. Um, it was added, there's a policy statement clause earlier in section 10.4 um, on uh, the commercial site plan approval. Um, I didn't know if that's something that we, the board would be interested in crafting, um, just a thought. Um, and it's totally fine if we just uh, move on from now, for now. Oh, is it not? Yeah, 12. Um, okay, I guess I didn't. Uh, accessory apartments, excuse me, I didn't uh, flag that one. Uh, so accessory apartments um, governed by section 26 of the bi zoning bylaw. Uh, planning board is special permit granting authority. Uh, I believe in this section, uh, uh, not all of the bylaw is included but um some of the some of the text um i don't know if there's additional thoughts on procedure or uh considerations that the board would want to include here uh happy to strike what is uh repetitive or redundant probably not put a lot of this stuff in it because the accessory apartment bylaw to be completely honest, have been working pretty well, just as we apply it out of the out of the by out of the uh, zone bylaw. Right. And I don't think we need to put too much in here as far as rules and regulations because it's you're, you're pretty much repeating what we already do. Right. Yeah. Uh, I get that, Jim. And again, really want to you know limit the the scale of this document and really just keep it to what is. Uh, uh, above and beyond the bylaw. Um, yeah, I like the, what you're doing as a pattern of having the the statement of authority and mm -hmm. so on. And then I would just maybe say the next, the net when you get to your next primary subsection, just say reserved. Right. And um, again, I haven't felt the need okay. to um, to add anything more to what the bylaw already says. Okay. That's very fair. Uh, and I will take that um, feedback in stride. I'll start cutting the uh, repetitive or redundant text. 
and just place um, a reserve subsection uh, for future um, uh, attention if if the board finds a need to uh, uh, articulate uh, specific rules or anything. Uh, so the moving on to section thirteen here uh, regarding senior housing. Most of this comes from um, the Senior Housing Overlay District, Section 27. Uh, I did not <clears throat> did not include the entirety of that one uh, because it can be a bit verbose. Um, uh, took out the did not include the design criteria or the procedures. Um, uh, that's about four pages that I didn't include. Um, just curious if there were additional uh, actions uh, or conditions um, that we the board would like to include here. Otherwise, I can just revert back to kind of that standard format. Again, we have only had one, one. application <laughs> okay. under this bylaw since it's been adopted. Wow, okay. Here's a question for the rest of the board to think about. The bylaw itself limits the total number of senior housing units. Yes. Should that be in the general bylaw or should that be in the regulations? Something to think about. You know, do you want to go to town meeting to amend that or would you rather just have a public hearing and amend it? I don't I mean, think you know, I'm, not, I'm, I'm kind of, I can... Mm -hmm argue both ways on that one yeah so okay continue kyle yes thank you um all right so then we get into section 14 here uh which regards home business this comes from uh, the home occupation section of the zoning bylaw uh specifically on home business because um home office is by right i believe um so just pulled out uh, this topic uh, as it requires a special permit. Uh, and then I did not know um, if there were additional procedures or considerations that the board uh, included when approving home business applicants. Um, in the bylaw itself, there are additional considerations listed, uh, 20 plus. Um, I didn't want to just copy all those and plug them in, but if there's any additional that have come out, you know, over the years, uh, happy to include here. This is another one where, uh, there was a little spurt of activity when we first adopted it and it's mm -hmm. been relatively dormant since then. Okay. Um, so I would say, you know, that's, that's fine for now. Most of the ones that have come in lately have been pretty, if you would, pretty tame. Hmm. Okay. So. Okay. Uh, so section 15, erosion, sediment control for stormwater management. This, um, this authority or this governing law is from the general bylaw. Section 195, Article 3. Um, planning Board is designated as a stormwater authority. Uh, and regulations for stormwater permits uh, and the general bylaw. Here, I did not include the entirety of that section, uh, but did include enforcement and penalties. Um, can't recall what encouraged me to do that, but uh, let's see this one. Um, uh, one note I found was that um, in the bylaw, uh, the Stormwater Authority is granted permission to appoint an agent for enforcement. It's not explicitly said, but there are allusions to the building inspector as uh, a, an enforcing agent. Uh, so I didn't know if we wanted to make that clear um, or if we want any additional uh, considerations or uh, thoughts there. I think that's that's a good point. If we have the authority to appoint 
-hmm. And um, at, are you saying it's the building inspector per se or the building inspector as zoning enforcement officer? Well, th so this language is, is um, exact to the bylaw. So I found it striking that um, it says that an agent may be appointed, but then in, when it comes to a notice of violation, the building inspector um, is required to uh, deliver that. Um, but it, but the building inspector is not identified in the bylaw as the enforcement agent. So that's where my personal confusion came in. Uh, well, maybe I, maybe we just need a section appointing the building inspector in the capacity of zoning enforcement officer. Well, no, actually, it's not a zoning bylaw. So the building inspector, yeah, we can just uh, a simple declaratory statement that the building inspector shall be the uh, enforcement officer. Yeah. I'll clarify or I'll, I'll make sure that the language is exact there. Um, but yeah, we can just do that and I can, I'll happily strike. Now, this. does the bylaw itself, this almost invariably comes up in connection with site plan approval. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so we just issue it in conjunction with site plan approval. Um, do we want to just say something about uh, coordinating with the Conservation Commission? Because they would be involved, in, maybe just a placeholder uh, okay. uh, to uh, joint consultation with uh, Conservation Commission. And uh, Kayla, who is both our staff support and the conservation staff support had to leave early. So okay. um, maybe just leave the heading in there and right. uh, we'll come back to that. All right. That's fine with me. I'm just going to cut this text since we've talked about it here. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, that brings us to the last section of this document. Um, and this is where my, my question uh, is uh, regarding um, where this uh, originated. I, I can't find reference to it within the zoning bylaw or the general bylaw for the town. Um, so just kind of curious there uh, as a starting point. And uh, uh, just you know, for the sake of being consistent with formatting, you know, having these those two s subsections, it's uh, a little curious. What, what do you mean, where it how, how why it why it originated? Uh, well, I don't know where the governing law comes from. I don't know. I I didn't see in the business limited business zone uh where design guidelines are referenced or um anything like that so just this, curious you're asking if this is unique to hadley well um so, so you, what you're saying is in the bylaw itself it doesn't have design review guidelines yeah there's no reference to that for for the district so the Hadley, I pulled up my copy. The Hadley Village Center Overlay District Design Guidelines prepared by the Hadley Long Range Planning Committee and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, December 2014. Okay. Uh, is that is that referenced in the zoning bylaw? I'm taking a look at the first paragraph, first few paragraphs 
to see if it says what its authority is. And no, it doesn't. Okay. You know, it doesn't say right. Yeah. Uh, where it came from. So let's see what the zoning bylaw says. Um, and I've only seen this text in you know a draft form of this document. So thank you. Mr. Dwyer, for just sharing that you found it somewhere else or elsewhere. Um, um Okay, um, yeah, here it is, 19.2.2. .2. Every effort should be made to meet the design guidelines adopted by the planning board to ensure that new development is compatible with the unique traditional and colonial characteristics of this village center overlay district. Right. Still the limited business. So, so yeah, related. so then sh should this just be reframed as guidelines for the village center because uh, i village uh, center overlay district right right village center overlay district um which you're i can not, you're not i'm gonna say i remember that committee and it oh. was not a limited visit it was the village center overlay district that that was about right yeah okay oh i'm sorry i was i was just assuming it was village center overlay district and not limited business right we don't have um okay let me go back then um limited business is that strip we have going up river drive correct yeah i think it, I think it ends up around exotic auto and cummins So did we, you know, we, we sort of, when we restructured, we, we when we created the table of uses, mm -hmm. we did away with a separate section of the bylaw defining the limited business district okay we incorporated all of that into the table of uses okay that would explain i hadn't specifically thought of it in those terms but uh that goes back to a predecessor Larry, Larry, forgetting his last name, but he was the one who was with us when we uh, created the table of uses as uh, something freestanding. We previously had a section that bad. verbally described allowed uses. Right. Um, so... Um, So I guess that would be uh, retitled the Village Center Overlay District. Oh, okay, yeah. Section 3.4.4. Shall adopt special... Yeah, so that's in the like Jim's planning board 
reference copy of the zoning bylaw because section 3.1 is the only so, section in section three these days right okay so three yeah so 3.1 is is that that's the table of use essentially yes okay is there still any language in the new table of use that that mentions design review guidelines i don't believe so but let me there may be a footnote to it right there are a bunch make of sure, footnotes make sure you let jim back in when he reconnects thank you mark <laughs> okay now i have to go to a different screen yeah <laughs> sorry um i could uh, i don't know if i've got the table of use pull, uh, pulled up I'm not seeing Jim asking to reconnect yet. <laughs> Welcome to the the world of charter. <laughs> Unchartered territory. Uh, <laughs> knew a pun was coming. <laughs> yeah, it looks like he's having uh, connectivity issues. Um, so yeah, I should have a multi screen set up at home. Uh, <laughs> That's why I've shifted to staying in the office late for you all. It's just a little bit, a little bit more convenient. Um, uh, I can, I can do a little digging, um, if, if that's all right, um, Okay, so, well, I have I have the limited. Oh, you found it okay. up now. Uh, I'm just going to the. Um, there's. Um, okay, it is footnote four. Ah, uh, okay. To the table of uses. Um, Uh, businesses shall resemble as far as practical residential and agricultural buildings in style materials and landscaping and in conformity with the historic uh, scenic and agricultural nature of the district. The regulations shall also set out procedures for review of the plans. So I okay. guess that's what there is. Um, it's just a footnote. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a uh, footnote, footnote four. Um, and um, footnote two. Mm. Okay, so I guess, yeah, just mention C table of uses footnote. Uh, Quattro. Number four. Yeah. Okay. Number four. Jim is oh. Jim is back now. Um, okay. Um, would you all like to go through this um, in detail or since it is pretty um, pretty absent from the zoning bylaw, uh, I'll make sure to get the appropriate citation or uh, reference to authority. Uh but it's a pretty small section, uh, three, three subsections, pro, uh, special permit process, standards for review, and then sp uh, special design standards, which include some graphics. Okay. I, which I don't think you need to use because we have those graphics appear. Well, okay, because this is limited. Uh, yeah, business. okay, this is limited business. Um, Welcome back, Jim. Yeah, my computer just completely shut down on uh, Zoom. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, you didn't miss much. We just adopted the uh, 
limited business design guidelines from Atlanta, Georgia. Otherwise, it... <laughs> so what we did find, Jim, is the uh, there is language in the table of uses for at a footnote for limited business design review guidelines. Yeah, under I think it's uh, three point four or something like that. There's a it says to adopt God. The planning board shall adopt guidelines or something like that. But remember that section, the three point four, didn't carry forward to right. the uh, yeah to the new version, but it did in a footnote. Yeah. Okay. So I guess yeah, we can't. I guess we can leave that in that. Uh, Maybe, uh, Jim, if you could forward to Kyle that section. Yeah, okay. And then maybe we want to use the old bylaw language for limited business as our regulatory language for limited business. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll give that to everybody in case they don't have it. Only, Thank you. Only, only oldies like you and me probably have it. Chris Joe has a printed copy of it. I'm sure. <laughs> it's not. Um, it's I, not I, have electronic, I have electronic copies of our bylaws dating back to I think about 1999 or 2000, something like that. So every time we adopted something, I made a copy, and my computer's full of that stuff. I think Joe's are carved in stone, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry, that was a little rude, but funny. Uh, He's the Joe is the Moses of our of our board. True. So why don't we just let that ride for now? Uh, okay. Get a chance to see what the bylaw, how the bylaw used to read. Okay. And see if we can incorporate that. That sounds good. Uh, that's clear guidance, and I appreciate that. Um, so then that brings us to the end of the document. Um, if we decide to keep most of this, um, I will, uh, for the next iteration, I'll go back through, cut the redundant repetitive text, um, leave uh, reserved subsections for uh, future uh, considerations or additions. Um, and address the the few things that we've we've spoken to specifically, um, and I'll do a little bit of of digging regarding the inclusionary zoning uh, payments in lieu of or fees in lieu of. Uh, if there's anything uh, new and groundbreaking to to share, um, and then I think we'll have a, a document that's pretty close. It'll be uh, it's currently 29 pages. I think we'll probably cut out uh, a handful just by removing redundant text. So uh, it'll get, get it down um, to a manageable size uh, and then really just articulate the, the things that uh, are most uh, relevant for uh, the planning board. So thank you all for, for working through that quickly. I'm going to stop sharing now. If that's all right. I'll say first just to make sure. In case Zoom quits on me. Um, on the agenda, there was an item for the DLTA project. Um, I'm happy to offer a quick update unless Mark, the chair, would like to. Oh, you can go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I'll be less verbose than last night. I went over, uh, but uh, it was out of precaution. Um, I've had two meetings with a, another community on the same topic that has been increasingly contentious so just try to be thorough with the steering committee uh, i believe the project was well received i think everyone is is uh, has a good standing and uh, grasp of what their task will be uh, moving forward uh, the steering committee is scheduling 
uh, recurring meetings the first and third Mondays of the month. Um, with the uh, understanding that uh, if if no work or no meeting is needed, we can postpone uh, until the next scheduled uh, time. Um, the recording for last night's meeting has been shared with um, Hadley Media, so that will get uh, posted. Um, and it is I believe already up, actually, Kyle. Oh, thank you, Alex. I appreciate that. You got it. Go, go, Alex. Go, Alex. Um, uh, again, thank you to Hadley Media for getting the room set up and making that uh, easy for everybody. Uh, we'll continue with a hybrid model um, uh, and we'll shift over to hosting the meeting, the virtual side of the meeting through the town Zoom. Um, I believe in terms of next steps, the, the next work that will be conducted is, is part of our uh, kind of um, uh, review of existing conditions. There, there'll be some um, comparison of existing zoning uh, and overlay districts particularly, um, and then uh, looking at land use patterns, that sort. Um, and then in June, we'll be uh, wanting to host our first of two uh, community engagement events. I think that's a succinct kind of update on that project for now. Uh, I will share um, the slides, the presentation that was that was shared um, uh, and presented last night. I'll send those slides to the planning board so you all have that presentation. Okay. Yep. Um, the other topic that uh, was brought up at a, a pr previous meeting, and I've gotten some documents from Mr. Dwyer, is a draft permitting guide that I believe was last worked on in 2022. Um, I need to insert the uh, process flowcharts that Mr. Dwyer shared uh, so that those are accurate to what the planning board is, is practicing. Um, if I may request, if there is a, a variance flowchart, there is a reference to something and one of them, and I'm sorry, they've all closed on me. Um, yeah, there, there's a reference on the project review and approval process flowchart to variance process flowchart. I didn't receive that. If that exists, I would appreciate that, Mr. Dwyer or others. Um, but I'll, I'll insert those flowcharts, and then I believe we have a very close to complete document. Um, uh, of course, before we uh, would approve it, or before I would give it to the planning board for approval, I'd want to make sure that the building inspector, building department takes a moment to review, make sure that everything seems accurate from their perspective. Um, and then I just need to insert contact information for the various departments and such, which Mr. Dwyer, you did send uh, a, a comprehensive list. Yeah, did, so. did I send you the... Uh the current little three-fold brochure that is being used? Uh, I believe so. Um, I believe that's what you shared. It, it came in two slides. Right, um, front page and back page. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's essentially all the departments that you would need to connect with for yeah. various uh, permitting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I was just going to use that uh, uh, to... Uh, to populate the contact information, which is like the last few pages of the document. Um, yeah, so I can have a draft uh, for review uh, for our next planning board meeting. So I actually um, did cover that. Permitting guide is is in my agenda. Okay. The, uh, the FY24 work program, I already blocked out all of the main tasks of it so that it's available to discuss whenever. Great. Thank you. Um, I, I believe that'll be a, a quick lift. So I should be able to get that for you um, later this month. If, if we want uh, in two weeks, along with uh, the revision for the planning uh, rules and regs. That so, would be probably good because we, we won't, we can't have a public meeting on the 21st because it's town elections. Right. So we can just have, 
another one of these. Yep. Um, and then there, uh, we're getting close to the end of the fiscal year. So um, I will make sure that we have the fourth invoice for planning board assistance sent along prior to the uh, prior to the last meeting of the fiscal year. If, if that's a, uh, yes, yeah. acceptable, You're right? Be okay. Um, yeah. So I'll make sure that that's sent along. Um, I had a date in front of me. Otherwise, uh, it ends up on the consent agenda at the next town meeting. Right. Yeah. We don't need to. We don't need to Something push that, that bled over from yeah. the previous. The, 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 uh, the last meeting of the fiscal year, I fiscal 20. year runs uh, July 1 to June 30, right, Bill? 30, yeah. Right. The, yes. the last meeting of Ju of our our last meeting of the fiscal year is June eighteenth. Right. So I'll make sure that that invoice is sent along um, before the before the fourteenth, so right. everybody gets a chance to review right. that. Yep. Right. Okay. Uh, and I believe that's all I have to share tonight. Oh. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I got to say, I, mean, I think I already mentioned to work on the contract for the next fiscal year. Oh right. Yeah. Yes, I will include that with my work to get this this fiscal year wrapped up. And uh, for anyone that, well, I guess it would be um, for anyone who doesn't know, going back to your previous discussions about the uh, Smart Growth Steering Committee. We are aiming to have seven members. Uh, we're waiting for um, Kayla's going to ask the Conservation Commission for a volunteer at their meeting, which I believe is this week or next. <coughs> uh, otherwise, we have uh, the Honorable Mike Sarsinski and Mark Dunn from the Planning Board. We have uh, Randy. Iser from the select board. We have Justin Palan from the uh, economic and housing development uh, or housing and economic development committee. And we have Deb Levinson from the council on aging and Andrew Gnatic as at large. So we're just, that has us at six and we're uh, hoping for a seventh from CONCOM. Very good. Yeah. Gnotic. Gnotic. Yeah. What did I say? Gnotic. I said gnotic. <laughs> gnotic. Okay. Thank you. Mike. Slab me. No, you know, just subtle, but it's, it's if you said gnotic in Poland, they might shoot you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Who, who was the uh, Council on Aging person? Deb Levinson. Deborah Levinson. I believe she does have some planning or housing experience. So. And uh, Kayla is our, our clerk and I was duly elected as the chair. And it just worked out that if we do those on Mondays, then it's fresh in our mind to report back to our parent uh, board. It's going to be Monday at 5. Yeah. 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 Right. So, um, Kyle, I, I, I'm not trying to add more work, but this work has been done. Ken actually did it. Right. Um, a list of the over time, we've had a list of work proposed work projects, right? Um, and we ambitiously always pick four or five and get to <laughs> done. Yeah, uh, which means that uh, there are some of them that drop off every year. So 
I wonder if um, you would be able to retrieve the list that um, access the list that Ken had sent around, maybe just update it with whatever has been on since you've stepped in mm -hmm. um, just so that we have a chance to look at what, what we haven't gotten to yet. I think that's where permit the permitting guide was on the list a while back and it just, right. it just languished and then was dropped and then we mm -hmm. got back to it. But um, as, as we're figuring out a, a 20 FY 25 work product work program, um, right. We'd like to just see what, what we haven't gotten to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've already found some older versions, so I'll I'll go through there and uh, show what has been accomplished and, and offer some options for for next year's contract. I know that one area that has uh, sort of it, it didn't survive COVID, but uh, mm. probably should get back to uh, um, some of the. Uh, assigning responsibility for some of the long range plan goals. Right. I, I think that was something that we, we had, there's some material on that too. It just, okay. uh, you know, like to maybe spend some time at our next meeting, just trying to figure out what we want to do with our spare time. <laughs> no. Yeah. We got sidetracked a bit by COVID and, food trucks and and didn't we look at the the asparagus festival and the use of the oh yeah of the commons and that's coming up again well food trucks for for example were something that uh you know two years ago that was uh came out of nowhere and we had to drop everything to try to create a structure, a workable structure. Um, and that was sort of the planning and planning is reacting. Uh, but that's what we get when we say, if it's not listed, then it's not allowed. So then we might, when yeah. something pops up, we might have to respond. Yeah. But that gives us more control than saying it's, you know, it's allowed if it's not regulated. I'd say the battery storage uh, bylaw came off pretty well. Was yeah. was that successful at town meeting? It yes. did pass. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. By a uh, very substantial number. Yeah, it was a it was a fairly agreeable town meeting. I mean, <laughs> there were there were questions duly asked, but. Right. Ultimately, I guess all the arguments were compelling and the the votes were overwhelming. Yeah. Great. Well, congratulations on advancing that work. It's mm -hmm. not a not an easy lift. Okay. Uh, all right. Um so you so you will be at the next meeting on the twenty first, Kyle? Yeah, yes. Okay. I, I've got it on my calendar and okay. I've already found the past uh, work. Um, uh, work plans and scopes of services. Uh, so I'll update that and uh, uh, include the next iteration draft rules and regs and also draft permitting guide. Okay. Yep. Good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, uh, a couple of little things. We have an invoice to pay, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, $1,943.53 for the period from January 1 to March 31st, 2024. I would move to pay that. Second. Motion second, any discussion? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes four zero one. Okay, and just for general info well, not information, originally, let me get the dates here. 
Barry Roberts was going to be in for the 220 Russell Street former Rockies on June 4th. And to meet the June 4th, they were supposed to get me the information um, basically today or tomorrow so that we could post the notices in the Gazette, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to be ready with that information for at least another week or two. So um, Tom Reedy contacted me today and said, you know, we may be cutting it very close to meet your time frame. How about if we move it to the 18th of June? He's, I think we can, well, we shouldn't have a problem meeting the time frame to have the public hearing for 220 Russell Street on June 18th. I said, that's fine. That's our last meeting of the fiscal year. Yeah. So the only thing that we'll have on the June 4th meeting will be the battery storage continuation on um, Breckenridge Road, the gravel pit, and the preliminary review of the two lot subdivision on Breckenridge Road for the same thing. And the not to get off topic, but the Breckenridge will be grandfathered, not affected by what was just passed, right? That's an interesting discussion. Yeah. By making it a two lot subdivision, they lock in the zoning prior to the recent passage. Mm -hmm. However, under the former zone bylaw their pro their project is prohibited by an opinion of town clerk uh -huh. yeah town court town council i'm sorry so that will be an interesting discussion mm. so we should check jim because i thought that maybe and maybe it's an old version of the law but i thought that um the effective date related back to the posting of the first notice of the public hearing that's what I thought. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Well. Yeah. That. That. But we. We. We can iron all that out depending what's going to happen at that. At that meeting. Right. Right. Yeah. So. Oh, um, Jim, wasn't there an invoice for storage bins for? Oh yeah, yeah, yes. But I don't know how much it was for. Do you know how much it was for? Yeah, let me see if I can pull it up. Um, oh, wait a minute. Might be, I might have it right here. I I forwarded it to you from DD. Okay. Um. That was back in the 19th. Mr. Dwyer, you have been <clears throat> beating the cats earlier. I haven't seen your assistant uh, attending. In, indeed. Uh, here, we, here we go, planning board containers, okay. Okay, here, here I got it, I can share it. Hundred and four dollars and ninety four cents. I would move to pay that, and that's to store what? Oh, storage totes. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah, those, they, pla they're, those plastic containers. They're what they're doing is as they um, redo the drawings. They're getting rid of all a lot of duplicate drawings. Instead of putting back on a file cabinets, they're putting them in these plastic bins and putting them in the archive so that we still have them around. Yeah. And so they're they're doing it for the building drawings, the uh, what you call it, DPW, et cetera. And they needed three of these bins for our stuff. Yeah, okay. So that was your motion, Mark, to pay. I would I would move to pay it. I'll second.
Do we lose Jim again? Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Yeah. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes 401. One absent. Very good. We in favor, one no camera, and one absent. So there was a presentation. Jim, do you, are you, do you have anything else? No. Okay. So there was a presentation on ethics and open meeting. Um, and there's a recording of that somewhere. Isn't it there? was recorded. Um, I'm not sure if it went out on uh, heavy media because it was for um, for town boards. Um, but uh, it was recorded. It is available. I had asked uh, Jennifer, but that was before town meeting, uh, just before town meeting. So uh, uh, she probably hasn't gotten back to that yet. Um, one thing when we are meeting uh, remotely, um, we should uh, open by announcing who's there. Um, and they still do want uh, town council was a little unclear in explaining it but th that we should do roll call votes when we are meeting remotely but we can do a self roll call so instead of jim saying sarzinski dwyer dunn we can say dwyer i you can say sarzinski dunn, I. I. Yeah. Um, so that that saves uh, a little bit. So Alex just uh, sent me a text that they won't be posting the uh, the ethics uh, and open meeting review to YouTube. Uh, it's not just have to public, out. But, it's, but, but it should yeah. be available to employees. Should be available. It was re intentionally recorded to be available to employees who weren't able to make the. Um, presentation so we'll figure out how that will work out i would reach out to jennifer for that yeah yeah okay now what, what do they mean by announcing who's at the meeting bill does that mean like everybody or just the Every, uh, no just the board members that are present oh, okay so uh if you uh watch uh the select board meeting the way amy does it uh you know this is the it, the Basically, we do a little script. You can print it out at uh, the same as you announce. Uh, at six o'clock, we have a quorum. Present are myself, Jim Maximoski, Bill Dwyer, Mike Sarzinski, Joe Zagrodnik, Mark Dunn. Uh, the meeting is being recorded, uh, even though Zoom tells everyone that it is being recorded. Mm -hmm. But uh, just a little bit of uh, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, extra formality. I, I don't think that anything we have been doing is illegal, uh, but uh, I guess they're encouraging us that if we want to keep all the keep availability of Zoom meetings, we should be a little wordier about it. No, I like I support that from the perspective of the diversity c committee that we're more, um, you know, if someone's on Zoom who's sight impaired, they don't see who's there. So you announce them and then they know. So I can see the benefit. Okay, that's not a big deal. We'll follow, we'll follow along the idea, the, the, the guidelines. Okay. Well, I, I have nothing else. Okay. Hearing nothing. Anybody have anything else? All right. Almost set. Uh, motion good to job, adjourn. Good job, Kyle. So, motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion moved. You have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.